right so let's um get a drop down in here so the drop down needs to pull the database grab all the slabs that's available and display them so we can do that hmm. yeah let's just do that in the slab creator let's see how big this file is okay so here's our slab database let me get a quick mic check here okay So we need to create a drop down. Where are we going to put that? Thinking above the identifier. So here's the identifier. So right here we're going to draw a prop property that uh, displays our slab database information. So we need to get something like this. I'm going to get that out of there. So that's our slab database. If we have a slab database, let's see where else we could change that. to do another check so if we have our slab database we are going to we certainly want this to be enabled put it here okay so in here we're going to create our enter GUI pop-up no we're going to do the layout and then we see what they have so here we can seven overloads So we need a selected index. Let's do that again. We need a selected index. GUI display options. We don't need to display any images or anything, so we can move on. Let's find some string options. There we are. Okay, so here's a string option. Selected index. I guess that would always start at... Uh, how do we save the selected index? Okay, we may need to create a a field in the slab creator and the label okay so looks like about six the one that we're going to use display options label okay so we need to create a selected index value in our slab creator So 
we're good. So we can use that. Now here. I think we may be better off to grab a property. That way we can track the changes. You don't exist. Come on now. So that's the index we're going to use, int value. And we need to create some display options. Six. Really? I don't want a label. Yeah, we do need a label. So, um, six, we need a label first. Let's do that. Just for now. And next step. Let's get back to our display options. And I think that's we can close that off. Let's define this. First, let's do our slab label. And our display options. we're going to need to pull in link and that'll get us those display options really really quickly so slab database dot slabs we're going to select all the names so in x x dot identifier and that will give us all the names out of the slabs and we'll change that into an array <laughs> so that will give us a display of our slab index and we do need to return this value so we can track it yeah so it's constant let's take that out of the loop and yeah we want this to be updated every time and that's fine so there we are oops constant naming convention so there we are so now we need to f if this changes right and this is easy to track on its own so last uh, So the last selected index equals the current value. And if they differ, then it's been modified. So if it's been modified, then we have a value and we'll change our identifier to that value. It could be a bit more efficient just to copy that out with my typing skills. There. So after we select one, if we have one on the list, it will update 
identifier and it must also update our pieces mm -hmm. how do we do that we do that like this so we don't want to change the pieces in the slab that's what this does we want to change the pieces that's already existing so this is what we want to do so we want to get all the pieces from which pieces do we want to use the pieces that's already contained in our in our slabs slab index so we can fix it let's use this one okay so now let's um, walk through this so we got a, a new set of slabs we're going to display okay hmm. let's get our this index we can change to transform that child count okay now we go through the transform we get the piece copy now this defines we're going to set each piece in that piece copy to this piece type so that's what we need is the piece type and we get the piece type from the okay so we need a slab that that's selected let's get that So we can, I'm going to change this to current slabs. And pull that out just like you did the database. So current slab. So if I do have a database. The slab name equals uh, and current slab equals so this just resets it. Let's just see if that turns ends up being a problem though. Well, it's just that. So our current slab equals our slab database slabs dot selected index now that says this slab database equals zero so how about we also check for and the slab's length is greater than zero oh, right, we won't um, get any errors okay back to this part so now we have our current slab and we're going to go through each piece we don't need the property the piece type we're going to get from the current slab dot pieces at i dot piece dot kind and that gives us our piece type we set and we invoke and that only happens if our last index does not equal the current index and once that has occurred 
I think we should be fine. All right, let's see how that works. Few minutes coding. What could go wrong? Well, we have all flats. And here's our ramp. Oh, that's the change we're looking for. And all flats. There we are. Awesome. So now we have update. Ramp update. And what if I do that? So that, that will set up a new series of stuff. So that doesn't change. How about like right now if we want to change it back we'd have to do that. If we put a little button here. Yeah, I don't wanna I don't wanna do that. So cool. So now we have the type. And we can select it. So uh, on to the next piece to remove all these all this information here. We just want for all the nine pieces we want to display the kind, the ID, or the index, I should say. Actually, maybe we should display the ID. Because then it would be easier to associate just by sight um, which piece we're referring to. So cool, let's grab these pieces. Instead of displaying the piece property, we're going to um okay. 